A young high school graduate leaves the Midwest for a carefree life in Hawaii, and she finds a fast food job and a roommate, but that roommate worries that Nancy Anderson isn't cautious enough, that she's too trusting. Well, it turns out that roommate's instincts were right, and just three months after they moved in, Nancy was tragically murdered. This is a case that dates back 50 years, unsolved for decades, and by all accounts had gone cold until now. Honolulu has a pull over tourists and mainlanders who move in to soak up the island life. It's what brought Nancy Anderson from Michigan to this apartment building on Aloha Drive in October 1971. It was here in Unit 704 that just three months later, she was murdered. Honolulu police say she was stabbed 63 separate times and died from hemorrhage due to a stab wound of the heart. The fact that he utilized a sharp, a sharp instrument to stab her 63 times. His hand, there's a high probability his hand slid down off of the handle onto the blade and he probably injured himself. The natural inclination is to take a bath towel or hand towel, whatever's around, and transfer it over to your hand so that you're applying direct pressure like this. Blood was found in the apartment and blood typing technology was available to investigators in 1972. Still, Honolulu detectives never closed the case. In 2003, getting DNA evidence from Anderson's slippers, beach towels, and bath towels, a bedspread and underwear, still no match for years. In 2019, Anderson's brother making an appeal. So we're not looking so much for any kind of uh, retribution or anything. We just simply want as much closure as closure can possibly give. Honolulu detectives enlisted Virginia-based Parabon Nanolabs forensic genealogist to use what's called phenotyping to put out this sketch based on the DNA taken from those items. A year later, results. This man, Tudor Chirila Jr., living in Reno, Nevada, was placed under arrest. Chirila had lived less than three miles away from Nancy on Aloha Drive and worked as a graduate assistant at the University of Hawaii. He had built a life becoming a deputy attorney general in Nevada, even running for state Supreme Court, until police got a DNA sample from his son. People that have committed crimes like this that have left some piece of them, that, that biological essence behind, they better pray. Cold no more, 50 years later, and some closure, as much as closure can bring for that family. Police say after his DNA was obtained, but before he was arrested, Charila tried to commit suicide. He is expected to survive, and right now he's being held in jail without bond. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.